Good morning. This is the wake-up show. And by the looks of it, I'm awake at least. Hopefully you are too. Ah, I'm uh, doing this episode from the from the good old house and uh Arab is out on some uh, some some adventure um uh, quests hopefully and uh yeah we're here we're alive we're not dead or uh, who knows i like this uh this concept of uh, of uh, this is just you remembering your life when you're dying. Oh, that's dark. Is it too dark to start off like that? Is it? Uh, should we go lighter? Should we? Should we keep it light? Um, so this is not about coffee or. Uh, I don't remember Rabbis. Uh, he he's, he does really. He does a good good intro. Not gonna try to be him I'm gonna be me I'm gonna do me that's that's all that I can do so uh, let's let's uh, let's get this show on the run shall we This is the Wake Up Show, and uh, this is me, Ulf, doing my best to wake you all up, one at a time, or like as an exponential curve. Like you wake up one, he wakes up two, uh, wake up four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Yeah, you know the, you know the maths of the whole thing. Now, we got a little thing called Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Wake Up Show, where you can support the show and make this show the greatest show on earth through all ages and all times, future, past, and present. Yeah. And uh, so go in, patreon.com slash The Wake Up Show, support the show, and um, thank you from the bottom of my heart to all your wonderful patrons out there who are supporting the show it really makes a difference and uh, you know we, we, we want to continue making this and, and making it more fun more spectacular maybe have some I think Rabbi wants us to have some cool visual effects and you know that takes time and uh, yeah thank you so Death. Death. That's like the end, isn't it? That's uh, end of the line. We all sort of, in one way or another, fear death, right? Like it seems so, so absolute. Like there's, that's something you can never, never, never turn back, back from. It's permanent you're not existing anymore and uh, you know as a as a kid I would I was really afraid of death but more about other people dying than myself which I found to be well quite quite interesting actually like because 
all I could see was other people dying, right? Like, so, so a relative would be dying or someone, or you'd read about someone in the paper who, who was dead. And uh, they were gone. Not here anymore. And uh, uh, I remember very distinctly because as a kid I had this aunt and uncle who I was really fond of and, and uh, I was contemplating and like thinking about it. Like, oh shit, they're going to disappear at some point in time. And I got really upset. Like, that seems so unfair. Like, I really care for these people and they're going to go away? Like, boom, like that? Seems seems rough, uh, but in, in in a way, I was never never thought about myself dying. It was strange. More about like losing other people, people I cared about, and uh, I don't know. That's Maybe that's still there. Like, maybe I still deep inside fear losing other. Let, that, it's like a big old letting go exercise, isn't it? Because this place called life, nothing's permanent. Nothing is here. Things come into existence and they stick around for a while and then they're go away poof magic but so on a physical level when we die typically you know heart stops beating and the blood stops flowing through your body and uh, and that's it but what about on like more, more of a spiritual level like because, you know, did notice that we have a soul. And well, what happens to the soul when we die? Does the soul die? Can a soul die? You all, you all know that. That's how could how could that ever happen? You're an infinite being, and you're gonna just all of a sudden like pack up your bags and uh, say no. That's it. I'm out. I do believe it's uh, it's my good old pal Alan Watts who said, like, imagining non-existing is impossible because you never have and you never will. You're always and forever something like that. Now, what we are afraid of is our physical death, right? Like this body, gonna lose this 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 thing that we're so well. At times we're not that happy about our bodies, but I guess in, on a, like a bigger scale, we do get convinced that's the only vessel we have available, and thus we need to make sure it lasts forever while eating junk food. Food. Mm. We're strange. We really, truly are. But we're afraid of this death. And I was thinking about this this morning, which is now, because it's early in the morning. And and to me, it seems to boil down to something as pragmatic as the fear of missing out. Death represents to us this innate fear that we're going to be missing out on some fun stuff, you know? Because the world just keeps on turning. Like, you see other people dying, and the world doesn't stop. So when you're dying, obviously, the world just doesn't care. It's just going to keep on doing its business, and new iPhones will come out, and uh, and they're going to make another Star Wars movie, and... and uh, and maybe you you could get to the, do that trip to the Chinese wall or like but you're missing out because you're dead. Well that sucks. Fear of missing out. 
Now, I can totally relate to that because my fear of missing out has at times been quite big. Like, you know, you're uh, you're going to to hang out with some people, but you're also invited to some other people. Maybe their party is cooler than the party you went to and you're stuck at, stuck at the wrong party. And that sucks. Or you didn't get invited at all. You didn't even get invited to the party and you're just sitting at home all alone. Now then you're really missing out. Then you're practically dead. So what is it that we're so afraid of missing out of? I guess we're afraid that we're... I I think it it still boils down to the not good enough thing, right? Because if you're missing not if you're missing out, then you're not worthy. If you're if you're not, if not worthy, you're, you're sort of not. Um, well, you're not invited. So then you must be an insignificant speck, and everything is meaningless. And you're dead. Boom. End of the line. All alone. I don't know. Is that really it? Is that, is that does that hold true to you? Does that feel deep inside of you? Like that's that's the core of our existence is uh, is uh, being born into a world and then walking around for eighty plus years, fearing missing out of things, and then at the end of the line. You have to face your greatest fear is missing the whole thing. You're gone. Because you have... I have. I have family, I have friends, I have children, I have a wife, I have a brother and a sister and... and other brothers and sisters and then, then I'm gonna... I'm gonna have to leave them at some point in time. Will I be ready? Or will I be so afraid of letting go that I will be unable to... (laughs) Hello! (laughs) Right? Will I be able to let go of my son? That's intense. But then again, this is life. So, I guess this presents itself as a as as a choice more than as something you're forced to accept. Because you could either look at it as, it as sort of like we're here to exercise letting go. We're here to not get attached even though it's insanely tempting or we can look at this whole experience as a giant middle finger in the air from the universe saying well look look at you look at how insignificant you are and uh, we don't even care that you're here so when you're gone we're just gonna continue like nothing happened and uh good riddance Uh, it's all a matter of perspective and we always come back to this right because it's so easy to to sort of portray yourself as the victim and to put yourself in the position of of missing out not being invited to the party and well there's a lot of suffering there and even though, you know, life will be painful at times. And it will eventually do off with you. It'll kill you. Now, we can either resist that. And through that resistance, we will uh, endure years and years of intense suffering. <laughs> because we don't want to miss out. Or we can accept this reality and the lessons that it's here to learn us. Can we do that? Is that even possible? Of course it is. The whole thing 
is what I would call hidden in plain sight. Now, this is the part of the year, you know, we're going into winter. I believe this is actually, it is actually winter. There's snow outside here in Norway. And uh, um, the sun barely, barely comes, comes, uh, comes out. So it's dark. Dark night of the soul. And, you know, through autumn, nature sort of kept on dying. Like the trees, their leaves were falling off. All the birds were flying away and and uh, the insects were just dying all over the place and there's a lot of death like surrounding us in autumn and then winter comes and and especially here in Norway you get like this uh, thick coat of, of white burying nature so there's this whole death ritual once a year where nature is sort of dying that's from a from a very limited perspective if i didn't know any better if i hadn't been around for a while i'd think oh shit there goes all the trees and look at that grounds covered in snow now the grounds dead we're screwed it's over then you know you have the winter solace everything turns and by golly we have spring and the sun comes back out melts the snow <sighs> the trees come back to life and uh, plants does as well and the insects come back also they've been just hiding around and birds come flying back into the place and then and it sort of restarts itself. That's pretty cool. So, once a year, we get to experience death, which we've sort of positioned at the end of our year cycle, which I think makes complete sense. And then we start off the year with spring, which is, is a rebirth. Things come back to life. So, every year, and especially, in, or I think you could say for the whole world, but I know at the equator it doesn't shift, like the seasons doesn't shift that much. Sorry about that come to Norway, stick around for a year and you'll, you'll get the gist of the thing, but the seasons presents us with the gift of knowing that this is not it. Things will be dying, but they will be reborn. And you know, it's so easy to sort of get stuck in you know the whole uh, we look up on the night sky and you look at the stars and it's, uh, well, you know, most of these stars, they're dead anyways because light doesn't travel infinitely fast. So by the time the light gets here, the stars burn out and, and yeah. And the star's dead. That's depressing. We're looking at dead stars. <sighs> but then again, stars are born. Well, it's, it's the circle of life. As someone in a Disney film once uh, said in a Hakuna Matata way. And for some strange reason, and this, uh, before I was so convinced that we were not a part of the circle of life. So we were just uh, observing the circle of life from our vantage point in our decomposing bodies before dying and being nothing which now I'm baffled that I could even reduce myself to such an is insignificant player in the play of life. Like, also when I'm dead, I'm nothing. 
even though everything around me continues to exist even though it liter literally dies. And I know, obviously, my grandmother is not around anymore because she died in 2001. But that's her journey, not mine. Like, why do I insist that other people's deaths are my death? Like... I, what someone said, and I really like that, like... You know, you you see you see other people dying. You read about other people dying. You you watch video clips of other people dying online, and uh, uh, you think that's your death. But that's you're not gonna die in in that way because that's when you die. That's your experience. That's your personal experience of death, and that's not gonna look like dying. Like, have you seen people falling asleep? Looks strange. When you fall asleep, it's sort of uh, cool, right? You sort of just drift out of of uh, of uh, of awake consciousness and go into into dream states. That's pretty cool. Which brings me to, and which I really like, is we sort of die every every night. Like you go to sleep. And you dream all types of stuff. And then you wake up next morning and you're like, who am I? Where am I? What what am I? Oh, yes, I'm Ulf. And uh, yes, it's a Monday. And yes, you're going to do the wake-up show. And yes, you have to make sure the technical stuff work. Something like that. You have to put your clothes on the right way. And then you sort of just remember through the course of the day who you are and uh, by evening you're uh, ready to let go again. So we're, we're practicing letting go all the time. But it's hard because we're so afraid, so afraid of missing out, so afraid of losing our possessions, our friends, but if you walk around all the time being afraid of losing things, will you enjoy their company? Or will you become overly attached to them because, because you can't bear the thought of them not being, being here anymore? You know, it's... Um, the human experience can be can be hard at times. It can be can be challenging. It can seem almost impossible. And sometimes even death will will have have this allure where it sort of seems like a um, a viable option to 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 getting out of 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 an, an impossible situation and. And I remember myself when, uh, uh, as a as a young adult and as a as a uh, also as, as a as a grown up, like especially when like if I was really depressed and and thing with depression at least in my case was like it felt like it would be like that forever, like I couldn't feel anything and. Nothing, nothing felt alive, and everything just felt mundane and 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 pointless. I was like, and this is it's gonna be like this forever. I was like, well, then you might as well just just die then, just call off the show. But but is that is that that only works? I think from the perspective of, of, of death being sort of the end, right? Because in my experience now, it's sort of like, well, you're here to learn something, right? So if you, if you call it off, well, you have to repeat the lesson. 
Now, like if you're in a different difficult relationship, it seems so easy to pin the blame on the other person. Like, well, everything's your fault, so I'm I'm perfect. So I'm just gonna find myself a new relationship, and then everything is gonna be perfect. But for some some strange reason, the same things keep popping up in that new relationship. So maybe it's got to do with you. Maybe maybe you're part of the deal, and. Even though from from this perspective, death death seems very well absolute. From the other side of death, which is hard to 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 see from this vantage point, because we seem to sort of be very much stuck in this reality. Even though we, when we dream or when we uh, meditate or do psychedelics or or pray. Um, or lack of sleep even actually which is really interesting we get into these modes of consciousness where we see that there is more to play and uh, um, well maybe we can actually listen to that as well like do these insights from from outside our reality actually actually contribute or give us give us something anything at all or is it just delusions and well an escape from the harsh nature of reality I used to be so afraid of losing my stuff my Donald Duck collection used to used to uh, I used to subscribe you know to to, to the um, to the comic book Donald Duck and uh, um I would I had like a a closet in my room which I put like a key key and a lock on it to make sure all my all my comics were safe because I have a kid brother and my kid brother also liked to read comics but he might like just leave them lying around or 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 uh, well he didn't treat them as well as I did because I was really careful with my comic books. I made sure they were in mint condition. Like they would be in... I'd leave them like neatly close when I was finished reading them. I'd have them in like... I made sure I have all of them. That I wasn't missing like... One particular comic from that year. 1992 or whatever. And and my brother didn't care about that, so I had locked them in into the cabinet. But at some point they became just dead weight to me, right? And also, why would I not share the joy of comics with my brother? Like, what was I afraid of? Like, I'd read the comic. But it was something so like beautiful about taking care of these these uh, inanimate obje- objects and 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 sort of <sighs> keeping them safe and and having them look new. It was something so <sighs> relaxing about it, and. <sighs> And you know, I think it it was so hard for me to let go of like the fact that things will things will these these comics books are not forever. They will perish at one point in time. They're made of paper, and uh, uh, but but if I could just keep them alive for as long as possible, it would sort of it would make my life more meaningful if I could take care of these things. At least within the span of my lifetime, but I could give the comic books to my children. You know, look at these beautiful comic books that I uh, that I uh, have been saving for you. And look, they're in mint condition. Oh, now look what we uncovered. They have value. Damn, I didn't see that one coming. You know, I was I was keeping these things because. 
they had value. And if the things I had had value, I had value because you know uh, the human body is going to physically decompose and die. I, there's no escaping that. But if I managed to stack up my cabinet with valuable items that I could pass on to the next generation, maybe somewhere along the lines people would say, well, Ulfi was a great guy because he kept these comic books for us and now we can read them. And Thus he was a valuable addition to our community. It's a shame we never invited him to our parties. Well, I... I wanted to be valuable, it seems, through things. Now, I'm not that Ulf anymore, am I? Because I had to let go of that, that idea that things, stuff is what makes you eternal. It's quite the opposite, you know? It's you that's eternal. It's like what the Vikings did, they bury themselves with all their, all their possessions and their slaves so they could carry on. Or is there something to that story that maybe, maybe there's more to that story, I should investigate that. Like, Because I think the Vikings were onto something, right? Pillaging the world, <laughs> getting more, oh man, we're knee deep in this. Just got to get more stuff, right? And then you'll live forever. <sighs> and to get more stuff, you know, you got to have that dream job of yours. And I remember my dream job would make me lots and lots of money. Because if I had lots of money, I could buy lots of stuff. And when I had lots of stuff, I would have value. I would be valuable. You know, I think I'd have more friends if I have more stuff, right? If I have more toys to play with, more people will come to play with my toys. If I have a fancy car, more people would want to catch a ride with me than if I have a shitty car. I get where I'm going with this? It's interesting. So I wanted to, to I wanted to have a high paying job like and you know I I I I got, I got a good I got myself a good job in television and I got more money than I could spend so I was was uh, I sort of reach I reached that goal I'm proud of you if you reach your goal it's great it is pretty great because what I came to realize was that there was nothing there. It's like, yeah, I guess Jim Carrey says it's more elegantly than me, but the whole thing where he wishes that we all could have our dreams come true so we realize that that's not it. And so in my, in my limited worldview, my goal was to have a high-paying job so I could buy as much stuff as humanly possible so that people could love me for the things I had. Now, that sounds pretty great. It's pretty dark. <laughs> because they couldn't love me. I was uh, flawed. I was a human. I was going to decompose and die at any moment. But if I had my Taj Mahal of stuff, man, oh man, would I be loved? But so when you have this dream job of yours, when you have, have, have this thing that's going to give you all the things that you ever wanted, fear kicks in, right? Losing your job. Of losing all your possessions. So just as with the fear of losing your life, of missing out on life, you fear of losing the stuff that's going to give you the life that you think that you wanted to have in order to enjoy it so the moment you get stuff the moment you get your dream job the moment you get everything you wanted you're going to be afraid of losing it like you have your house and and what if we lose the house 
and then that that's going to be a disaster so we tend to do like all kinds of weird stuff to 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 make sure we keep the house keep the job keep our donald duck collection in the cabinet because what happens if we lose it the job that we didn't even want but we thought that we needed to have in order to be happy to get all the stuff that we could surround us with to seem like we live for all eternity <sighs> must get bigger tv in order to enjoy life more and what's fun about that is that parts of me still feel that like craving like if only i had a bigger tv than my father-in-law he has a huge tv it's massive insane why i need to have a bigger tv than him so that he, when he comes around to visit he'll say oh shit ulf has a bigger tv than i do <sighs> he must be better than me oh damn i i wish i was better than everyone right that'd be great then i'd live forever you know i could build like huge walls around my country and just sit on top of my throne and, and be like feel, feeling like i made it I made a fool out of myself, I guess. <laughs> there was this, there was this, uh, there was this, this film uh, where. Uh, oh God, I've forgotten. Now I've forgotten everything about this reference. George Clooney plays like a, a, a character who goes around the country uh, and fires people. But when he fires people, he gives them a speech about getting fired is not a door closing it's a door opening and and he so believes in that story even though in corporate america that doesn't really hold true but to me it seems like it's truer than true because we're you know, you read in the paper, like, there's some factory closing and all the people in the factory are going to lose their jobs and it's horrible. Like, they're, it's death for these people because that, that was their income and that was their livelihood and now they have lost their jobs. And on one level, of course, that's that sucks. But it's a door opening, God damn it. It's, we need to stop looking at this as, 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 a, as a trap. It's not a trap, it's a... What's the thing where it's sort of... Um, it's a slingshot. But if you insist the slingshot's a trap, then you're going to be stuck there and you're not going to sling anywhere. That's going to be painful. Because you're sort of getting pulled somewhere. Like, there's a pull. So, uh, come on, let's go. Let's go on an adventure. And it's, no, no, no. I got my doll duck collection. I got my big screen TV. I got the job I hate. I got everything here. Don't... Don't mess this up for me. That's that's going to be hell. Yeah. Welcome to hell. Hell is you in a slingshot holding on to your Donald Duck collection. Woo-wee, while going to a workplace that you hate driving a car that makes you miserable because it didn't make you happy, even though the advertisement for the car said you would. Just one more Coke and I'll be happy, content. To be fully alive, we need to just let go. And what's strange about it, and that's what baffles me, is that once you're willing to let completely go, you have everything you ever wanted. Like once the moment you stop attaching to everything around you, you're you're free. And now obviously you're gonna get attached to that idea. So it's quite a lot of of untethering to do and and, and I think it all boils down to, at least for me, it's like your tethering, your connectedness is not through physical objects surrounding you your soul's tethered to the to the tree of life to to creation itself 
but you can't see it, right? It's not like when you look at your back. There's not like a tube or something connected to something somewhere. It's you're not stuck to anything. I got no strings to hold me down. Ba -da -ba -ba. Don't know the sound. <sighs> wow. That is pretty damn cool. When God closes a door, he opens a window. That's from the film A Sound of Music. Maybe it was a book originally. I don't know. It's my wife's favorite film, and it's a, I really like it. And before, uh, as a atheist, finite being, I did not like the fact that when things go shit, that can be a good thing. That can only be bad. But now, my friends, I, I feel like not only does when things go go haywire mean that 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 isn't necessarily a bad thing it, it actually means like it can elevate you to a higher level it can be your rocket fuel propelling you out through the window challenge accepted can we trust for a moment at least that life is here for us not against us. You know? <sighs> Maybe it makes it a bit easier to let go of all that suffering that we're so attached to. Because we need to suffer to, to, to enjoy life, right? Uh, at least I thought so. But I was wrong! Not completely wrong. But I didn't see the whole, didn't see the whole bigger picture. So I was like stuck in, stuck uh, looking at the front page of a, of a, a comic book and, and thinking that that was all a comic book was. But then I opened up the comic book. Turns out there's stories in there. There's all types of stuff happening. You can even win prizes at the end. That's pretty cool. <sighs> okay. So, we're afraid of dying. We don't know what happens. Which brings me to this rebirth thing. You should tap into that as well, right? So, everything in nature seems to be dying, but it seems to also be reborn. Um, now, uh, uh, years ago, when my spiritual awakening... I went to a ayahuasca retreat and then and, and during that ceremony I experienced the universe being reborn which made a lot of sense like it'll be the singularity it'll explode out into being and then it'll um, over time decay and then it'll go back into being nothing before doing it all over again It's like billions of billions of years. We have all the time in the world. Relax. But your soul's not that. It's not finite. It's infinite. And I used to think reincarnation seemed like such a such a such a silly idea. Like reincarn what? What? Why? why Okay, so when you die, you're gonna re be like reborn. So then, where does that leave you? But what I really like about reincarnation is that it makes you more. Well, it makes you have to take more responsibility of life and your surroundings. Because when you reincarnate, well, then you reincarnate into this existence and. If you didn't make this place a better place for you and me and the entire human race, you know, to get that point across, um, 
well then what what does your next life have to to offer like if you if you if you came here and wreaked havoc and and uh, were miserable and made other people miserable although well, those other people and here's the thing with reincarnation is that you can reincarnate a lot you know and outside of time well it seems that you can also reincarnate before after and at the same time as you were born yourself so you know that random person on the bus that might as well be you that people that person cutting in front of you in traffic is you you see if you if you open up the door to the fact that on a very deep level you can incarnate to all the beings that has ever been then it doesn't make a whole lot of sense treating them like shit there's something humbling about that which I really like I really like it and even though I can't remember my past lives and it's not really that important either what's important to me is to acknowledge that the people around me are equally important to the well-being of the planet as I am And also that the planet itself and the plants who die every autumn and come back to life every spring also have a quality and a consciousness and a presence that, that is equal to me. Finding that balance, I would dare say, is when I found my home. Like, like seeing that... I'm a part of this, I'm a player in this, and, and I'm connected to all of this. That, that really, that opened up a window, you could say. And you know, all my comic books could fly out that window, it was fine. And from that perspective, you know, why would I not share my comic book collection with my brother? My brother is I. I is my brother. Yeah. We're so afraid of dying because we're insisting that we cannot be reborn. Even though everything around us states the opposite. So what do you want to be? Poor little insignificant me? Or do you want to be the whole thing experienced in the thing? Do you want to stand outside the party complaining that you were never invited? Or do you want to be the party? And these are perspectives, choices that we can make. We are always at the party. As my friend Rob Bell would say. And what I really like is his, it's almost like the thing is rigged in your favor. Can you believe that? Can you believe that the universe is for you or is it against you? That's the leap of faith. And I know deep inside my heart that this place is good. That's why I make this show. Together with Rabba. It's sort of uh, over, over here in spirit. In here. He's in here. He's in my heart. He's always around. I think we've come to the point of the show where I s I'm going to actually do some, some internet searching because it does seem appropriate, you know, when you do like a wake-up show I hadn't had breakfast even but let's not break the fast yet 
I prepared like a crazy, crazy delicious lunch because we had a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner yesterday and and there's leftovers and I'm going to heat them up and I'm going to eat them and it's going to be, it's green bean casserole, it's macaroni and cheese, it's cornbread, it's got everything. I digress, sorry. We need to search the internet far and wide. So I'm going to go, you know, I have internet on this computer, just got it installed. It's high speed and everything. I'm going to search. For a quote. And then let's see if we can I think we can print it out on a piece of paper. I always, I know that's sort of disruptive, but see, let's see if we can, because I have a, even have a printer here. It's out of ink, at least the colors. I didn't get around to ordering any new ones. <sighs> Damn it. Such a failure. What an abomination. There's still black ink left. Our printer is printing. I think we're going places, yeah. That's good. Oh, wait for it. <sighs> yeah, it's it's December. You know what? what, what I believe some people celebrate Christmas because it's like the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas. That's pretty neat. And. And you know what happens to Christ? He can, the fellow dies even in Easter. I'm gonna say that for Easter. You know, as a kid, I thought, well, he lives only for three months. That's short. That's a short lifespan. Turns out that there's some year in between. He lived like, I don't know, maybe he was in his twenties, thirties. Who knows? Who cares? But now this guy he dies, and then he's reborn to prove some sort of point. Do you think? To show you what you're not. I do recall him saying, you shall do greater things than I. He probably said it in Hebrew, but me don't remember my Hebrewic lessons. Fear of dying is sort of the fear of being all that you can be. But being alive is the lesson of trusting that you are what you are and that that is good enough. Now let me pull up my quote, printed it out on a piece of paper. It looks rubbish because the printer is out of ink, but that's all great. So I'm going to hold it up. I think this, this, this quote I found will... Um, Yeah, I think it fits really well. So, like that? Like, like this. Now, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make the change. It's in pink, you, Michael Jackson. Pretty cool, huh? Because you can actually make the world a better place. And it starts with you, my friend. It starts with you. It ends with you. And then it starts all over again with you. And we've been playing this game for eons. And we can keep on playing this game for a long, long time. But I think it's about time we enjoy. Joy. Word of the day is joy. Joy to the world. Who can bring joy to the world? You can bring joy to the world. There's no joy in the world, you bring the joy. The world's a horrible place? Well, are you a horrible place? 
and eat more vegetables, someone would say. Exercise. <sighs> Accept that you are you and that you are good and you're in a good place where good things are happening all the time, even though at that point in time it might look awful and horrible. Oh! Oh, death, despair, horribleness. I welcome ye all to the party. Ah. <sighs> Well, that I do believe about wrap things up. So death, we covered death, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we did, and uh, and uh, and um, rebirth. Yeah. You know, like in those really like in the hero's journey, and in those those films we like to watch. It's typically when the main character is willing to die for the cause that he is reborn or she, but typically a he because we are in okay male dominated era of the world. That's okay. There's room for the feminine as well. I'm losing track completely over here. But To be to be willing to to sort of give yourself t to life, you have to trust that there's more to life than just comic books. I think that, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna land on that one. I love comic books, and I love you, my wonderful viewers. I love myself, man. I love Rabbe. I love everyone, and I got this this old heart of mine. You know what's cool about that? It's got like an infinite cloud storage plan. There's room for everyone. Everyone's invited. Now I'm gonna quickly remember there's a thing called God damn it, mirror camera stuff. Can't see. Remember Patreon? dot com slash the wake up show you can go in there and support the show become a patron and help us make the greatest show of all time you know this we're starting to to, to close in on the end of the year and and the wake up show is is dying but trusting that it will be reborn on the other side in 2020 we're just gonna <sighs> What well, damage you're just gonna knock it out of the park, you know? Yeah, thanks, Christer. Joy is something to work for. I, yeah. Believe in that. Okay, so thank you for watching. Spread the love and all of that good stuff and uh let's see if we can't 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 end this on a uh on a on a note of sorts. Oh shit. Unfuckable. That's what you are. Unfuckable. Only on far Like a song of love That clings to me How the thought of life Does things to me Never before Has someone Been Unfuckable in every way, and forevermore, that's how you'll stay. 
That's why, darling, it's incredible that someone so unfuckable thinks that I am unfuckable too. Thank you. 